Okay, this particular lesson we're going to look at how do we change tools using Fusion 360. Here I have three pockets that I'm going to rough and then I'm going to come back with a finishing pass. And I'm also going to show you a couple different settings here that we have. The first here is tool containment. The first one is going to be tool containment on the outside. Let's We'll see what the results of that would be. This middle one would have tool containment on the center of the boundary. And then the last one will have tool containment on the inside. So it's important to see what the results look like because over the course of machining different projects you might use all three of these different options. Here we have the part already fixed, ready to go. I haven't done any zeroing of my work part yet. You can see here I'm going to use the center of the part again on this example. So I've started carbide motion. We're going to cut, connect to the cutter and it will begin its homing cycle. Let's just go to the rapid position to get us close. And now we can start moving it into position. Okay, so we did a zero all on all these locations. I'm just going to jog this up slightly. Get it away from the stock. Now we're ready to save out our post. So I've selected the first three adaptive operations and those are the first only ones I'm going to post at this time. It's loaded up and we should be ready to cut.
Okay, so now we're going to replace the quarter inch tool in, or flat end mill with the ball end mill. Depending on your depth of cut, you got to make sure you have enough room here to accommodate your depth of cut, or you might hit with your your uh, your holder here. Okay, now it's time to zero. I'm just going to go to the current offset position. You can see here that. You know, carbide motion remembers your your last zero point. Even if you were to turn the machine off and turn it back on, it would remember that. It is a good best practice, though. If you're machining something, it's going to be very very long, have several operations. I generally write down the coordinates of my zero point just in case it doesn't remember. I've had a couple of occurrences where it did not remember what that was. So now I'm going to zero Z, and again I'm going to use the manual method to do so. Usually I like getting as close to the material as I can from the original. move it safely out of the way. Now we're ready to post our next three files. So inside of Fusion, I've chosen the scallop operation because I've learned that that has provided me the best surface finish, especially on parts that have a tapered tapered wall. Anything with any any kind of non non 90 degree or non perpendicular wall, scallop does a really good job of giving me a nice surface finish, which we'll see when this is completed. My scallop settings are pretty standard. I have a a sixteenth inch step over. Um, if I really wanted a really fine smooth finish I might crank that down to 0 0.03 but let's see what uh, a sixteenth of an inch gives us on a uh, on a quarter inch uh, ball end. So I've posted the file and I'm ready to load it into carbide motion. And now we're ready to run it.
Okay, it's complete. So you can see here that the, by machining to the inside, inside of the edge, it left this sharp edge, but it also left some of those fuzzies there. Uh, when I said center line, what that did is it brought it brought the tool up a little further and it was able to clean up some of those edges as well. So that's one method you can use, especially if you have tapered walls, uh, to make sure it's on center line so that it walks up that edge a little bit further along that ball end mill to do that. Here you can see a tiny bit of a mark on this top surface here where the ball actually climbed up onto this top surface because we said keep it on the outside of that line. Here it's, it's not visible, so that would be okay, but you might have some cases where it might actually leave a mark on the top of that. Now my step over of a 16th inch, you can see, you can kind of feel it's kind of rough. Uh, interesting story here, I was carving out some serving platters for, for uh, my brother who owns a restaurant, and he actually liked seeing those machining lines in, the, in there, and he he felt that you know the food wouldn't slide off or slide you know slide much on that serving on the serving tray so we left them so he liked the appearance of what that looks looked like so in this case in, in that case i was able to make 20 car you know 20 uh, serving platters for him with virtually no finishing sanding other than some light hand sanding to finish it up so here if i really wanted that smooth i'd probably bump that down to 0.03 inches to get a nice smooth uh, finish on that so that's an example of how you would go through a tooling change with Fusion 360. Uh, I'll also have links for these files uh, to download if you want to actually have these, these files to, to really look at the settings that I have in there.